first did my first proper show in 1989, the first payment I got, and this is supporting Big Daddy Kane at Brixton Academy. Yeah. Wow. And Silver Bullet was there. I was there. I wasn't even on the bill, but yeah. I got put. Like the whole the, the reason for the story of the CD business was that, you know, as an artist, I was always trying to help other people recognize there's talent on their doorstep so mm -hmm. what i'm doing with the channel and the reason i'm talking about this is basically i'm going to try and give everybody an opportunity to but shine. i can't yeah, yeah but i can't make you shine yeah. you have to make yourself shine when that cameras mm -hmm. when i made lyrical maniac i already knew that the first two records are the ones i've got to make that's going to make a difference where people will never forget you mm -hmm. yeah? so i made sure that those two records when i came out of that studio i was over the moon about them if I wasn't feeling like, yo, I've done something special here, I'm going back in the studio until I change it to something special. Like but me, I'm probably known within the uh, podcast. Butcher! I'm, I'm known as the butcher, isn't it? The butcher of cuts and, you know, <laughs> rough, rough, tough and raw. <laughs> this world was made for all of us. Yeah, it wasn't made for you lot to just get rich and buy your Lambos while other people can't even afford their bus fees. You've got 5,000 subscribers. They're locking you off so only 50 of those subscribers are seeing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then they're forcing you into a corner where you have to pay for advertising. Like there's there's a lot of artists that were dope and whatever, but they never got a look in because someone didn't recognize who they were. And because they didn't know how to market themselves or they didn't have a record label or whatever behind stand them. And listen, you should stand proud. proud I, listen, I, am, I am proud. Stand proud of what you've achieved. Do, do you know what? Like I'm going to say something really maybe to some people it'll just seem like some ridiculous thing to say some ludicrous stuff here but I just you know want to clarify the main reason I got all city Steve to come in and be the, the pilot episode of 521 was because he was the first person I saw in the UK hip-hop scene that was documenting the UK hip-hop stuff graffiti whatever right? we all do different and, and this is an important thing as well with all of us doing our interviews yeah we all do something different. We all add something different to the equation. Well, what I'm saying is, I'm pretty sure if I was 20 minutes away from you and the BBC was four hours away from you, you'd rush to go to the BBC. I take this opportunity to thank everybody that has turned up. Everybody. Massively. Yeah. yeah. And I'm supporting the UK scene. He's not supporting the Canadian scene. He's supporting the UK scene. Mm. You know you what I mean? Canadian so make sure dad. you go and check out uh, Canadian Dad React. Got so we got, we got like Blade t-shirts and whatever, but... This smile at the world, and yeah, the world smile at the world back at you. Yeah, smile at the world, and the world will smile so, back at you. Lights, camera, action. On this week's show, I have someone in the cab who's not only a great MC and has released classic hip hop tracks like Lyrical Maniac, The Coming Is Near, Rough It Up, The Line Goes From Strength to Strength, and many, many more, but also has a wicked YouTube channel called 0521 Official and bring sofa chats, one takes, music video, and a hell of a lot more, and is trying to build the UK hip hop scene. We have the one and the only blade in the back. Yes, B. What's going on, bro? You good? Thanks Listen, for having it's me about again. time we've we did, we've done this one because we've had a you know a few years of madness, but um, I can't wait to chat to you. And anyone watching, this isn't actually going to be like a historical chat because we've, we've already met before and done an in depth hit like um interview on your early history so this is going to be concentrating on the 0521 channel which i can't wait but yeah anyone watching check out blade's um historical history because he went deep didn't it any blade into your history yeah that's right i mean i say or you say deep but we only really <laughs> covered the like up to about 1980 <laughs> <laughs> but listen we could have been there forever doing it you got so much history but one thing i did do i got you to beatbox with something you hadn't done for years on that interview isn't it yeah yeah i mean like you know when you're in the shower or whatever you just kind of beatbox to yourself but that's that's about the most beatboxing i've done in years so well, listen, yeah. and, it, and it was wicked because we got you in that tunnel where you used to practice beatboxing as a kid in, right. in Cholton yeah. under the subway. Yeah, that's right. That's the same exact tunnel uh, where I spent a lot of time. Um, it's actually the tunnel where I sprayed a couple of pieces on the wall as well there uh, in that tunnel. So, I've, you know, when I started my early career as an artist, obviously that's not what we're here to talk about. But when I started my early career as an artist before I'd made any records or anything years before, mm. you know, we were all kind of indulging in the whole graffiti culture, the rap culture, the hip hop culture, basically. Um, and, yep. you know, it was something that we all dabbled in. If we were into hip hop, we did pretty much everything in it. 100%. You know? And the only thing we didn't really end up doing like fully was probably the DJing because that relied on having equipment to do it. 
But all the other things, it's just your mind. And that you, was didn't, you didn't need, need the electrics to plug it in, just whipped out a pen or a spray can or, yeah. a, you know, or bust some, uh, some lyrics and off you went. Yeah, exactly. And Bug. you know, we had, a, we had the luxury of having a petrol station next to us that put spray cans like idiots right next to the window. <laughs> and uh, you know where those spray cans went. <laughs> exactly, yeah, in those deep pockets in your deep trench coat. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's why you, one of the reasons you used to wear it. Yeah, that's but, right. But anyway, so anyone, you know, checking out this, uh, this, this kind of cab chat, you know, check out Blaze interview. It's absolutely amazing. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, chatting to you um, about the 0521 official channel which is absolutely incredible your youtube channel and first things first i'd also like to give a massive shout out i'm sure you do as well blade to all the other podcasters out there arms house to your mum's house nova flip i mean we got yeah arms house to your mum's house in the place and all the other podcasters out there you know doing your thing you're doing absolutely incredible keeping the history moving uh, obviously keller as well big shout out to keller and everybody else you're all wicked keep doing your thing listen you're looking great look at you as well man we are, we have got you fully 0521 garmed up <laughs> you... that was your fault <laughs> But yeah, no, you're looking wicked. Right, but let's uh, right, let's take the glasses off now, and let's go straight uh, straight into uh, straight into action. There he is. There he is. We've got him. We've got him. All um, right. Let's, let's take it. On. I tell you, what, let's take it back to the kind of start when all this happened. I mean, basically, you went from obviously um, it was a CD business, wasn't it? Manufacturing like CDs for artists. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I started as an artist. And then at some point I had enough for personal reasons. Some of my close friends know what those reasons are. And one day I might tell the story, um, you know, but I stopped the seed, I, I stopped the life of an artist and I went straight into doing the CD manufacturing business, which I actually stumbled on accidentally. Um, and the reason I'll tell the story now, um, the reason why that CD business kind of existed in the first place is because when I was doing my last project, I did a whole bunch of CDs. I did six different projects and I did 800 CDRs for promo purposes for each of them. And I did them all well in advance. I did them all together. That cost me 4,800 pounds plus VAT. Now, I did that with a company called Heathman's. I was really, really disappointed with the, with the quality. I was disappointed with the way they conducted the business in terms of they delivered everything on time that was that was great that wasn't a problem but when you've got six different projects and you've got a single with two tracks and then you've got an album and you have put the audio for the album on the single and you haven't got any of the jobs right so I basically went back to them and I said look I need you to redo these because these are all wrong like you have put the wrong audio to the wrong artwork and everything is kind of fucked up Anyway, they said that the guy that I spoke to in the office basically said the only way they're going to do it is if I pay again. And I'm like, what do you mean pay again? Like, you, you fucked up. It's not me that fucked up. I came and did the mastering at your offices and then you basically went ahead and manufactured them. You know, if there's anything labeled incorrectly and whatever, that's down to you. Everything was done at your office. The mastering, the manufacturing, everything. So all I did was just give you the job and said, there you go. And I gave it the artwork and it should have been clear from the labeling from the mastering guy and everything anyway they fucked up so I out of desperation with the CD business what I tried to do um, I thought you know what this is this is fucked up and the story that um, came from that the, the evolution of that was basically I ended up having to get all of these CDs done myself because I didn't have the money to go back and do it again and I was really pissed off, but I went over to Maplin, I bought 5,000 CDRs, then I came back home and I basically printed labels, little labels, and I cut them out individually and I stuck them on every CD, right? Um, so it, all it was was the title, I didn't stick labels everywhere, I just put the title so that people knew which CD was for which project. And then from there, um, I sat there and I burned every CD on one drive for four and a half weeks, hardly sleeping. Wow. I was, I was shattered, I was really, really shattered. <laughs> but I, I, I manufactured all these CDs myself. Wow. And, um, and then that gave me the idea of thinking like that was long-winded, but I didn't have time to stop and think at the time. 
So because it was so long-winded and everything, I thought, you know what, why don't I just buy one of these machines? And instead of like trying to go and sell CDs at a time when people are downloading everything now, I thought, why don't I just go manufacture these myself, buy a piece of equipment that does all of the printing and the duplication and everything, and then I can hit the festivals and I can sell them cheap. I can get the CDs for like 10 pence and I can go and sell the CDs for 50 pence. So if I was doing that in the thousands, then I'd be making my money back. So mm -hmm. that was the plan. So I, I called up a company called Verity, uh, Verity Systems and um, a guy came around to my house and I asked him at, on the phone, obviously, if you do home demonstrations. They said, yes, they brought a machine down, sat in my living room. Anyway, while we're sitting in the living room, um, the guy is basically showing me the demonstration of how the CD uh, printing and everything works and all that. And I'm like, I'm interested. How much? He goes 7,900 plus VAT. I'm like, I've only got 3,200. Because uh, the prices weren't on their website. It was, you know, when back in those days, I don't know if you know that when things were more expensive, this, mm. like they didn't put the prices on the website. They mm. wanted you to call them and talk to them, mm. um, you know. Part so, of their, mar their marketing kind of ploy. Yeah, yeah. Entice, they, they, entice you in and then give yeah. you the real price once you've rung them up. Yeah, exactly. But from that, what happened is... Um, I said to the guy, all I've got is 3,200. But in the conversation we were having, he made one major mistake. And he said to me, this doesn't cost you money. It makes you money. So I used that against him later in the conversation. Now I'm saying to him, look, if you give me one of these machines for the 3,200 that I have, I'll come back and I'll buy more machines from you. Yeah. And he was just like, everyone says that. And I'm like, yeah, but look at me. Do I look like everyone? You know, like look at the hunger in my eyes kind of thing. And um, the guy goes, he can't do it. And as he was packing away the equipment and everything, he opened up another conversation. That's a fatal mistake you made, Rory. And you opened up a conversation where you said, what kind of music do I listen to? And I said, I listen to hip hop. As chance would have it, and this is, bear in mind, five or six years later, as chance would have it, and this is like really as chance would have it. He goes, I listen to hip hop. There's one particular song I like right now. Uh, which I think was released a little while ago. And the song just happened to be, You Don't See The Signs, my record. Mm. So I'm like, wow, what was the chance of that? That's, for me, that's like God giving me a sign. That's a, that is a sign, isn't it? Yeah. So, totally. You know, that's the, for mm. me, that's like God giving me a sign. So I, I basically said to him, oh, I know them guys. And he goes, oh, really? I really like them. I've been listening to this for like months now. It's amazing, whatever. And Rory... If you remember this conversation that we had, if you're watching this at any point, remember this conversation, Rory. Um, so I said to Rory, look, I know the guys, um, the, the rappers, like, like my twin brother, basically. That's how close we are. And he goes, oh, really? And he goes, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting something signed by them, autographs, whatever. And, and I said, I can make that happen. But I'll tell you what, Rory, how about I make that happen and then you give me the piece of equipment for 3200 and I guarantee you I'll come back to buy more equipment from you, a lot more. And he's like, I can't do that. My boss will kill me. And anyway, I said to him, look, uh, as the conversation went on, he was kind of like, oh, I, don't, I don't really believe you know them. So I'm like, all right, cool. Well, what have you got to lose? Let's shake on it. If I don't know them, you don't lose anything. If I do know them, I get the piece of equipment and you get a lot more money from me down the line anyway, right? And he's mm. going, okay, cool. So we shook on it. I've gone downstairs into the garage. I've basically pulled out a whole bunch of T-shirts, hoodies, caps. Uh, I think I had a belt buckle at the time, but I only had one at the time. I had uh, one, one or two made specially, but I gave it to him, the one that I had for myself. I gave to him. Um, and posters and CDs and vinyl, literally everything. And I went upstairs and I sat on the table, right? And I'm signing everything. And he goes, what are you doing? I go, I told you I know the person. And he goes, yeah, but why are you signing it? I go, because I am the person, right? <laughs> so we ended up, so we ended up like with him kind of a bit confused and whatever, like thinking what the fuck has just happened. But he's going, I don't believe it's you. And I'm like, so where would I get all this merchandise from? All sealed up, bagged up. He goes, you could have bought them. So he goes, all right, prove to me that you are him. Go, Did How? you start rapping? Yeah, yeah. I, I said to him, like, you know, uh, what do you want me to do? He goes, well, rap, rap the track. So I started rapping the whole track. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> he's literally like, oh, shit, my boss yeah. is going to kill me. Because we shook on it. We shook <laughs> on it. Brilliant. 
So anyway, he went back to the office and he sorted out the paperwork and everything and he sent me um, one of the printers like within a couple of days um, and they, they showed me a demonstration of how it works and everything, how to set it up and all that and I set it up and got busy and within four months I bought another one and then another four months later I bought 12 more machines all together. Wow. So I had 14 machines all together. Because I, um, when I come around here, I, I see it all set up. Before you started the channel, it was like, it was like unbelievable seeing all these CD manufacturing, you know, uh, machines in there, and it was like, it was a real kind of hub, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I've got two rooms um, in the studio there, and basically it was just equipment back to back, wall to wall, mm. and uh, that all started from Rory. And Rory, when I said to you that I was going to come back and you made that mistake of saying this is going to make you money, literally I, at, at certain points I was walking into the bank and they're asking me if I print money. <laughs> That's how much money was coming in at the time, you know, it was crazy. And the, the thing was that, it, and, and the reason why I'm telling this story is because this actually led into why I do the channel. Mm. And it's something that has always been instilled in me from, from early. Um, you know, we spoke about this off camera many times, um, Steve, yeah, yeah. Right? where, you know, when I used to headline shows, when it was me headlining and I had control over what I was doing and promoters couldn't really tell me much other than, you know, just, you know, keep to your contractual agreement, which is perform an hour and whatever and, you know, whatever those terms were. But I always used to stand on stage and for anyone who's been to a Blade show, you'll know I always pull people up on stage. Yeah. Um, and the re reason you do that is because you want to give the the kind of you want to give them recognition because you you know you started somewhere you started like them nobody really knew you until you kind of like built your reputation so what you was bringing them in to kind of trying to big them up yeah I mean look you were around at the time back in those days we didn't always get an invite to the to jump on stage we had to just jump on stage mm. yeah and mm. we had to go in there like people trying to stop you and you're just like nah fuck it whatever I'm going on mm. and not everyone's got that kind of drive or that kind of understanding but the point I'm making is you know when I was an artist I was inviting people up on stage and I'm going back to like 1989 1990 all those days we were always inviting people anyone that could beatbox rap even DJs sometimes DJs used to come to my show with records in their bag saying yo I'm a DJ can I jump on and I remember that specifically happening in Cardiff uh, with a guy called DJ Tomato mm. and I mean like that was one situation that I remember but there's loads of them so I, I mentioned him because I know his name I don't remember everybody else's name you know I mean but um, you know so my thing was always to try and help uh, so when I did the CD business the whole reason why that evolved into the CD business is because when I gave up being an artist, before I'd finished being an artist, I'd already started the CD business. I was actually flying back and forth to places like Germany, then flying back to come and do the CD job and then go back and do a show another day. That's how quick I was turning CDs around. I wow. could come back for the daytime and be back at the show later that night. That's how it was. It was crazy. Um, anyway, so obviously the CD uh, business, the, the reason why that existed was basically because I was thinking of how I can give back and how I can help artists and whatever because the trick is obviously and the trick has always been like you know keep the artists alive and allow the artists to become like real artists where they can all earn and benefit from all of this and whatever and that basically creates a, a situation where loads of people are earning loads of people have careers and stuff it keeps my business alive it keeps their business alive it keeps everybody alive it keeps the promoters alive it keeps the agents alive do you know what i'm saying you know and i saw i saw that from very early that the important thing was like always support each other mm. because when when you're doing it just for selfish reasons you know it's it's basically it benefits you you don't benefit no one else you know like i've actually done shows where promoter hasn't made the money he was supposed to pay us and i've gone don't worry about it leave it it's all good do you know what i mean and there are promoters out there who verify that. We've had conversations behind closed doors. And what I've said to you is, yo, just promise me that whatever money you keep, you put on another event. And that's basically, you know, that, like I said, there's promoters out there who, who can verify that. So if you're one of those promoters who was there in that situation, having these kind of conversations with us, tell people, put something in the comment section and let people know what was going on mm -hmm. and why you survived longer than, than you, you actually supposedly would have do you know what i mean because mm -hmm. some some of the events weren't making any money 
but you survived because there was people like us that were basically turning up just wanting to do the shows and just wanted to, to basically create a scene. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of us. There's a lot of people like-minded that want to just create a scene and build something more. And it goes beyond our own wants and needs. And you wasn't necessarily doing it uh, for, for money either, you know, you probably played at some of these events like, possibly for free as well because you, you love what you was doing and um, it was just inbuilt in you. Listen, where, where I come from, we, we didn't do this for money. We just turned up at every house party, mm. we turned up at all the events. I can't remember ever getting a payment in the early days mm. at all. When I first did my first proper show in 1989, the first payment I got and this is supporting Big Daddy Kane at Brixton Academy. Yeah. Wow. And Silver Bullet was there. I was there. I wasn't even on the bill, but I got put on the bill. I'll tell that story another time. Mm. I got put on the bill and I got paid ten pounds. Mm. Well, no, let me rephrase that. I was promised ten pounds. I never got paid ten pounds. I was just thinking, you know what, I could buy a kebab on the way and I could walk from Brixton to New Cross. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't even get that. No, no. You know, you've done, you done it as well for the love, because, you, 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 you know, you are, you are a, a, an amazing talent, a showman, you know, and you've got what it takes, and that's quite a rare thing as well. I mean, there is so much talent out there as well, isn't it, Blade? And that's, that must be another reason, you, you, you know, you started the channel, because there's so much talent out there throughout the UK and the world, and people aren't really getting their props or their recognition. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know what, like, the thing is, everyone's kind of going on about knowing their worth and all that kind of stuff, right? But the thing is, some people's worth is very exaggerated. Like, I don't see how a DJ should be getting paid 30 grand for spinning for an hour. You know, all, all that kind of stuff. When really that money should be split evenly, not evenly necessarily, because you're a bigger DJ or whatever. But some of the artists, instead of saying like to the artists, come and do this for promotional purposes, while someone else is getting paid thirty pounds, that's a, uh, sorry, thirty grand. That's that's a kick in the teeth. Like you can at least give these guys the money for the food, for the travel, and give them some extra money so they can go and put something in their fridge. It's not a lot to ask for, but there was a lot of situations where promoters were doing that they were booking bigger names and and then throwing all these little people aside and whatever that's little to them not little to me that's mm. little to them mm. yeah but they're filling these um you know these events with loads of names and whatever like you've got 30 40 50 names on there but most of these people ain't even getting like you know like any money to buy food and put in the fridge so for me i was always looking at it like you know what can i add that is going to be fair and all that kind of stuff. And that's when I started the CD business, I looked around and I was seeing all the prices. People are charging a pound a disc. And I thought, you know what? I could do this for half the price. So I started my CD business with 45 pence a unit. And the idea was I'm going to help the artists. If I keep the cost down, they'll keep coming back. And, you know, they'll, they'll know that the jobs are done quick, the turnaround's quick. You deliver the, the artwork and the audio professionally, you'll get your job back professionally. Yeah. And if you waste my time, then and it, it keeps dragging on and whatever, then, you know, I've got other people I need to talk to. So I'm just going to leave you to it while you organize yourself and then come back to me when you are actually ready, rather than just a whole heap of questions that go nowhere. You know, because, you know, there's a lot of artists and these artists are all trying to make a living. They're all trying to survive. A lot of the artists aren't even actually trying to make a living. They're just trying to survive. Mm. Trying you know? to put food on the table. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you, and you've been there, you know. Uh, I mean, well, we well, well, we don't even have to go, but we know you've been there and, you know, you was homeless and all that. So you, you struggled yourself, haven't it? So you know, you know what it's like. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the thing about homeless, could I really be considered as homeless because I was sleeping in the basement of an equipment store? I've, I've always been kind of baffled at that. Yeah, mm. I didn't have a normal place like everybody else with beds and furnishings and stuff. Um, but is it really classed as homeless? I don't know. What do you reckon? Mm. Mm. Well, no, you had a roof above your head, innit? Yeah. And you, you, but I say homeless because it was I was thrown into a situation. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. like I didn't I didn't have a flat. That, I didn't that, have it wasn't like I didn't you was like you was, you was you was on the street with rain beating down on your head and. The most I've been homeless for like that was about four days. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, but then obviously I landed on the other situation where I was able. To, but you know, at, at the end of the day, it's, it was actually a little bit more comfortable sleeping on the like 
you know, on a park bench somewhere than it was, or, or, or under a tree in Greenwich Park, um, than it was sleeping on the cold floor at the studio that, you know, the, the shop basement. Do you, do you get what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah And, no, and then totally waking right. up on a few occasions, uh, like there must have been at least three occasions that I remember with mice and rats like running all over the place and whatever, you know, but it's these things that make us though, right? Of course it is, yeah. It's them things that kind of build you and you know, you, 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 you go back that you wouldn't appreciate the good times and what you've got now if you didn't struggle through the, through the harder years. Yeah, exactly. But, but ultimately, like the whole, the, the reason for the story of the CD business was that you know, as an artist, I was always trying to help other people recognize there's talent on their doorstep. So I carried on with the CD business, knowing that I was helping a lot of artists. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of artists out there who've done CDs through me who will basically um, validate what I'm saying as well and confirm that they were getting credit notes, discounts, all kinds of stuff. So, so even, I, even back then you was trying to help them through the CD business? Yeah, yeah. Mm. But, but, but the point I'm making is it wasn't about necessarily what I was doing. It was mm. about making sure that what they were doing was able to get them into a position where they could carry on. Mm. Because if they're carrying on, I'm carrying on. If I'm carrying on, they're carrying on. You see and that, that, cycle? Food, that food chain passes throughout, you know, th then venues carry on and every, everything else, you know, and um, there's, there's the whole wealth of people that kind of get affected by this isn't it and it's a positive thing yeah of course i mean like look i, I know loads of artists that basically couldn't afford a pound a disc and they had to struggle to, to raise a pound a disc so some people couldn't even afford the 45 or 50 pence a disc mm. you know but it's like if they couldn't afford it i gave them the opportunity to basically um you know i, I trusted people but some people broke their trust there was, there's a lot of people around out there that owe me money and never paid back. A lot of them, you know what I mean? But I'm not bitter about it. I just basically know that when I do anything that basically money is involved, now I've got to be careful about who I give credit notes to and who I give the discounts to. Because some people, they get their discounts, they, they go about their business and, you know, you know they, they treat it like, it's like, I didn't have to do that. Fair enough, I didn't have to do that. But... You know what I'm saying? Just give a little bit of respect for the fact that someone was looking out for you. And I'm not talking about me. There's other people that looked out for you lot. You know what I mean? But what happens is somewhere down the line, you forget that people are helping you and then you just end up going into a situation of where it's me, me, me. And then you end up like basically alienating the situation and you end up in a position where, you know, it becomes just about you. And then it becomes greedy, selfish, capitalistic and all kinds of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And that, that ends up killing the scene. That, ke that ends mm. up killing everything. Mm. And that's, that's maybe one of the reasons why we don't have the scene that we deserve. Why other people have come in and created scenes and had lucrative careers off the back of it where we haven't. And it's amazing what you're trying to do. You're trying to build, you know, build that UK hip hop scene because, as you know, there's so much uh, talent out there. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Oh, the talent. I mean, look, the talent, talent is measured in different ways to every individual. Mm. Yeah. So I can turn around and say I rate somebody highly and someone else can turn around and say I don't rate that person. Yeah. But regardless, there's loads of talent out there. But the thing is, if I'm being honest, like I find there's a lot of people that don't know how to be original. Like, you know, so as much as they're talented, they sound and look like other people that are, that are already here, that have been here and whatever. And this is this is the beauty of being an artist and being a talent because the ones that are meant to shine will shine the others just kind of fill in the ecosystem and keep things moving yeah so for every headline there's going to be support acts the support acts are the people that basically haven't reached that place of knowing who they are the originality and everything and the headlines are the ones that bring something different to the game yeah so when you when you say for example you look at somebody like chester p Dope lyricist, blah blah mm. blah. You know, he always deserves a headline slot. Oh, big you know fun. what I mean? Big fun. Always deserves a headline slot. Um, and you could say the same for people like, um, say, somebody like Klashnikov when when he's on a bill. Mm. You know, it's like you know, this something special is going to happen. You know, um, so yeah, there's there's loads of artists. You know what I mean? Um, and and it is it is literally like I said that separation of like 
who deserves to be in the headline slot and who deserves to be sort of building up but but also like if you've got like so many artists and they are kind of emulating somebody else mm. some people get stuck in that place mm. they're always emulating somebody else mm. and because of that they're never going to get shows not even a support act because there's already people in the ecosystem that's above you and those are the people that are going to get looked at so you know with with what i'm doing with the channel and the reason i'm talking about this is basically i'm going to try and give everybody an opportunity to but shine. i can't yeah mm. but i can't make you shine mm. you have to make yourself shine when that camera's mm. on you you got to come in and do something you different. you got to put 100 into it yeah and, and come in with something different just bring your a game every mm. single time do you know what i mean you can't you get one opportunity with everything mm. yeah and the, the only reason why you get a second opportunity is because you, you utilize that one opportunity and did something that basically people want to call you back for. But if, if the first opportunity, you know, when, when I made Lyrical Maniac, I already knew that the first two records are the ones I got to make. That's going to make a difference where people will never forget you. Mm. Yeah? So I made sure that those two records, when I came out of that studio, I was over the moon about them. If I wasn't feeling like, yo, I've done something special here, I'm going back in the studio until I change it to something special. But we were fortunate, we, we were hungry, we had lived a certain way and whatever, and we were able to kind of bring that up in a, in a way where we knew that, yo, when this comes out, people are going to know about it. I know people's going to know. Mm, it's going to be know. them, you know, them, them tracks shone through, do you know what I mean? I mean, and as you say, they firmly put you on the map straight away. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> it's, it was our life. So if it didn't do that, then we didn't do what we were supposed to do properly, mm. you know? But your channel, I mean, it's going from strength to strength. I mean, you basically, you started it back in, when was it? It was 2020, uh, December. Yeah, so December was the first one that went up. You yeah. Know? And, and you were the pilot episode. I was, I was the guinea pig, innit? Yeah, you were uh, the guinea pig. You got me in as the, test, as the test pilot. Yeah, exactly. But you know what, I have to say, like, I was I was listening to other people and people were saying, oh, do the interviews as 20 minute slots and whatever. And I think that was a mistake. I should have just carried on like filming longer interviews. Also, we made a couple of mistakes on the first day where we had too many people in. And, you know, that was my fault. I put my hands up to that. You know, it was a new ex experience, a new journey. It's so, all a learning curve. Yeah, that's right. Mm. But part of the mistake was that you spent 11 minutes talking about your socks. Yeah, but listen, it was the important part of uh, of the hip hop connection with my socks, the color of my sock. We'll tell him about the socks quickly. Right, so basically, <laughs> while we're doing the interview, he's got his leg kind of crossed over, <laughs> and I noticed the color of his socks. I'm like, so that's a pair of interesting socks. And he goes, yeah. Um, basically, the London buses, the, the, the material that used to cover the cushions, the seats, on the London buses, <laughs> his socks were made from that material there. So <laughs> it's the got, same pattern, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the same pattern. So I was like, wow, yeah, you know what, now I'm looking at it, I can see that. But the thing is, I asked one specific question, and in that knob, he goes and <laughs> talks about it for 11 minutes. And when I was editing, it's like I couldn't, because I was new to, to the world of editing, um, and I do all the editing and everything myself, because I was new to the world of editing, I ended up, not being sure how to cut that to say the important thing about the socks without keeping all 11 minutes in and so I how long did that take to edit oh that took about three days four three days, days for an 11 a, minute clip yeah well 20 20 minute clip is it ended up being um, oh yeah but that i mean you know we've had other interviews that we've done like the one i did with disorder and paul h there was um bumps and thumps all over the place because we got a new sound guy to come in and help and he was he was really helpful but mm. uh, unfortunately on that occasion it ended up being more a case of um that was more of a hindrance than a help you know um i i did say to him before the interview started like if there's any bumps and thumps and stuff stop the interview otherwise we ain't got an interview mm. and when when i was editing i called him and i said bro there's bumps and thumps on every single word. And he goes, um, yeah, but I didn't want to stop the flow of the interview. And I'm like, but I told you before we began that we need to stop. Anyway, um, bottom line is, it's like... How long did that take to edit? The Paul H interview took me two months. Two months to edit? 
two months to edit just audio. Wow. Right? And um, but the thing, the thing is, that's another thing which stands out about you, Blade. You know, you are a perfectionist. It's not like me. I'm probably known within the uh, podcast. Butcher. I'm, I'm known as the butcher, isn't it? The butcher of cuts and you know, <laughs> rough, rough, tough, and raw. Where, <laughs> where you know, you are coming in with the A game. You know what you're doing is totally professional. You're using, you know, really expensive, high-end equipment. And as for your studio, you know, let's talk about the studio because, listen, you, you moved all your CD stuff out. And you I, turned... I, gave, I gave all that away. Yeah. I wanted to just get on with this quickly. It was in the middle of a pandemic. The, um, you know, I already had a policeman friend kind of like calling me and uh, uh, not calling me. I bumped into them outside and they basically said to me, yeah, this is like about a month before there's going to be a lockdown. You know, mm. they're talking about a lockdown blade, you know, go and buy your beans and whatever else you need because you can't go to the shops. And I was telling a couple of friends that, yo, go and stack up your fridge and whatever. But as much as I was telling them, I didn't do that. So we got caught in that little um, madness that was going on where we couldn't get any, any things for a little while, for a few days, until eventually, it's like if you're getting, a, I don't know, a can of beans, they used to be 30p, now they're like 80p. Mm. It, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, so we, we started doing all of this during the lockdown. Um, and you know, when, when I was building the studio, the materials, like, say, if you're buying a bag of plaster, mm. like it was normally about four pounds 65 a bag. Like I needed 11 bags of those to do the ceiling alone. So that cost me 465 pounds because everything was like, 10 times the, the price mm. on top of that like trying to get the plasterer to come down who's my regular plasterer he normally charges 180 200 pounds to do a ceiling charged me almost a grand to do a ceiling like people were just like i can't come out but you know what it's funny how you can't come out but you can come out for more money yeah, that and this is where the whole capitalistic attitude comes in you're taking the piss not just you as the plasterer but everybody else and i told him on the day you're taking the piss um, you, every, all of, uh, there's a lot of people out here that's using this as a situation to benefit themselves and they don't give a fuck whose lives they, they're fucking up. There's a lot of people out there that don't have anything and there's a lot of people out there that are making excessive amounts of money. We saw that with the toilet rolls when the pandemic kicked in and the first lockdown happened. We saw how much people were charging. A mm. pound something for toilet rolls, but you're charging 10 pounds. Mm. You're con merchants, all of you. Like, you know, like this world was made for all of us. Yeah, it wasn't made for you lot to just get rich and buy your Lambos while other people can't even afford their bus fares. There is uh, some, there is some selfish people out there. Some, me. some. Like, listen, in in our time when we got into music, so I'll give this as an example. When we got into music, we got into music because we love what we did. A lot of people get into music now because the first thing they think about is how much money they're gonna make. Yeah, mm. and they come in here with the the attitude of like it's all about the money. And they, they have very little to no love for or passion for what they do in terms of the music. Then they end up like emulating what they see others, other people doing. And like I said, a few people stand out, but everybody else ends up being copies. Yeah? And some of these people go on to make big money and whatever. I got no problem with people making big money. But when you're putting on events and you're charging people like 30 grand to do a show in a venue that holds 600 people, that means the ticket prices are going up for the fans that can't afford to come and see you. But they're eager to come and see you, so they'll find the money from somewhere. Whether it's them drug dealing or robbing their parents. Because I know people that have robbed their parents. I know people that have told me, you know, when mom wasn't looking, I went in a purse and took the money so I could buy the ticket. I know people that do that shit. You know, and it happens. You know, or they go without food. Or they go without whatever. You know, they, they need new pair of trainers because their ones are ripped to shreds or whatever and you know they, they prioritize supporting these artists but you the artists like come on man you even when i was in the charts we weren't charging extortionate amounts like that like uh, there's a lot of people charging extortionate amounts and they just need to calm it down it's like there's enough for everybody you know and the, the, all, all of this like in my in my opinion like when one person puts the price up for something, someone else is caught up in that domino effect and they're putting their price up so they can afford to pay for what you're, you're paying, you're charging for. And it needs to just calm down and come back to reality so mm -hmm. that everyone can survive in this. 
Because there's so many people that I know that have told me, I've watched people go on lives and talk about killing themselves because they can't afford fucking a, a can of beans. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The world is the world has gone a bit mad now. No, but, you know, that, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay positive. Yeah, and, yeah. But these things need to be addressed mm. as well. The, but the point I'm making is like, so what I'm trying to do with the channel is I'm trying to create opportunities where mm. people can be seen and heard. Because while some people are in a position to be seen and heard, other people are getting completely shut down. Mm. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying everyone that comes through the channel is dope, is amazing. That's for you lot to judge. Yeah. My my thing is to give the opportunities. People call me up and go, yo, can I come and do a one take? Yeah, come and do a one take. I always tell people, bring your A game. Mm. And then it's up to them whether they impress the audience or not, or whether they even push themselves. Like, you know, in, in terms of like, you've done the thing here, are you going to go and promote it now? Because that's the only way you're going to get the views. And the reason why I say that is because YouTube has gone into this mad capitalist, capital, capitalistic mode as well. And they're like, if you got 5,000 subscribers, they're locking you off so only 50 of those subscribers are seeing what you're doing mm -hmm. and then they're forcing you into a corner where you have to pay for advertising and then when you pay for the advertising generally when you pay for advertising if you put a poster up at the end of your road everyone that walks past or drives past sees it mm -hmm. but youtube's not allowing that what they're doing is when you pay for the advertising from my understanding of this speaking to someone who knows what they're doing and who's basically got like three four hundred thousand subscribers on their channel they're saying when YouTube does that, what they're doing is they're basically opening up to the people that are subscribed to you anyway, that they're blocking from seeing you. And even then, they're only showing it to a certain amount of people. They're not showing it to everybody, you know? So, so, it's, only, so it's only reaching out to like a handful of your subscribers. Yeah, and it's yeah. the same for your channel. It's mm. the same for Arms House. It's the same for Keller. Mm. It's the same for everybody. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's fucked up. And I've noticed, you know, view, viewing figures have gone right down. I mean, you know, you used to get like, you know, one, two, three thousand views. And now, you know, you might get like a thousand views over a few days, but then it kind of drops off. Yeah, I mean, you're lucky you're getting a thousand views. Like, you know, when I do the one takes and, you know, I noticed like we used to get a couple thousand views on those back in the day, mm. like, you know, uh, a little while ago. But now that's like some of the people are like just literally, you know, 50, 80, 100 views. You know, it's, it's crazy. You know, but it's, for me, the thing is, it's like, I'm, I'm not doing this for the views. That's right, yeah. You know, and, and as I said to you, I'm not even. The views doesn't bother me, subscribers doesn't bother me. I, I do it because I enjoy it. I love doing it. It's a hobby. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the views make a difference. It makes you like, feel, as long yeah, as it's they, genuine views. It makes, you know makes you feel nice when, you know, something, you know, gets get definitely when someone views and you get a lot of people commenting. It, it does. It's good. It, it's nice to read feedback, isn't it, as well? Yeah. But, but you know what, like, I mean, that, that as well in itself is an interesting point, basically because, you know, there's so many people that basically could be supporting each other, mm. but everyone is caught up in their own world. Mm. Like, you know, everybody's caught up in their own world. Like, I'm mad busy, so I can't really go and like on every, every YouTube thing or whatever. But the thing is, what, it, what I'm providing is a platform where I, I personally believe that if everyone just jumped to, whether it's my platform or somebody else's platform and you supported, then that can grow. Mm -hmm. I'm giving back via my platform. Like, I don't necessarily need to go and comment on everything you post on your Instagram or your Facebook or even your YouTube and whatever, but I feel like it will make a big difference if you lot actually came onto a platform and did that. And, well, and, and that's the thing, Blade, look, we're saying platform because what you do is not just a podcast. You know, let, tell, tell, tell the people that are watching this, tell us about, you know, your channel, the way it's broken down, who's involved i mean you know this this is kind of like a hub of creativity you know you go onto your channel you're seeing music wicked music videos you know you're seeing these like one takes you're seeing like great interviews i mean you know what you've created is incredible you know i've been going for like 10 years since uh, 2014 i started my channel you know i've slowly grown it over the years i think i've got a few thousand three four thousand subscribers um, and as you know, I just love doing it as a hobby in the cab. You know, you've only been going for three years. You know, you've built up 5,000K subscribers. It's had something like over nearly half a million views over that sort of three and a half years. It's incredible what you've done and what you've built at this early stage as well. So tell, you know, tell the uh, people that are watching this, tell, tell us what, what sections have you got and how does it all kind of work? Because it is like a hub of creativity, isn't it? It's not just about interviews. 
Yeah, I mean, um, okay. By the way, I love you like listening to me as well. That's also a good sign of um, a great interviewer. <laughs> You've listened to me b- b- waffle on there for about probably about a minute, but you was taking it all in, innit? Yeah, yeah. And now you've made me forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, but I'll put it in no, a no, nutshell. No. Tell, tell me what what your channel is about. Yeah, you yeah, know, I know what I know what the question was. I was, I was <laughs> just joking. What you'd forgot. No, no, no. I was just joking. Uh, stop making um, stop. No, I was just joking. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> a few days ago, I looked at the view count and everything. So it's at this at this stage, it's got six hundred and thirty thousand views, wow. which I feel is cool. But with, with the amount of work that I've done, it should really be in the millions, like mm. multi multi millions, mm. you know. But you have to remember that we're supporting artists that barely anybody supports, people that basically don't get a look in from anywhere. You know, we we go to like, you know under the rocks and find some of these artists. You get what I'm saying? That's mm. how that's how it seems sometimes. Mm. Um, but we're trying to support people that basically don't get a look in and it makes it more difficult because as I've said so many times, you know, I wonder how many Rakims and Big Daddy Canes and Ultra Magnetics we've missed because we didn't recognize them. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's, there's a lot of artists that were dope and whatever, but they never got a look in because someone didn't recognize who they were. And because they didn't know how to market themselves or they didn't have a record label or whatever behind them, you know, they, they never got the push they deserved. Whereas some of them did. I'm pretty sure someone out there is better than Rakim. We just don't know it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, it's, um, I, used to, I used to use that analogy when I was watching the Olympics and the, when I was really young. I used to see people like Carl Lewis like doing the 100 meters and thinking, shit, that guy's fast. But I wonder if there's someone in the jungle somewhere running away from a lion that can basically run way faster than Carl Lewis or someone who's like, you know, being chased down by someone with guns and whatever and they're they're running for their lives and they're faster than Carl Lewis. We just never know, right? Uh, So that's that's my mentality. That's the way I think. And the thing is, Blade, as, as you know, it only takes one little spark to light that flame. And, you know, that's the great thing with your channel. You're you're documenting and you're getting all these wicked artists in to perform. It only takes someone out there to like to, to look at that and think, wow, this guy's got what it takes, whether you know he's from a, a huge record label or wherever he's from, or a fan, you know, making a new fan. I mean it's so important, you know, what you're doing and what you're capturing. Um okay, so there's there's a lot of people that have messaged me and contacted me saying that they've linked up with somebody else. Um, through, through your channel, well, through there you the go. channel. Yeah. So I get that all the time. Like people are like, "Yeah, I linked up with this guy. I discovered this guy." Mm. Other people saying they discovered artists they never knew existed, and so on and so forth. But in in terms of like, let me so let me break down how the channel works, and and it's gone through changes all the time because like mm. we're feeling our way around. We went into this completely blind. Mm. You know, so it's something. It's morphing. it's morphing all the time. Yeah, but but let's let's be straight. Like doing the channel was something that was an idea from many many years ago. There was a friend of mine that used to do DVDs uh, through my company and everything, and I said to him, instead of documenting the stuff on your DVDs, carry on doing that, but how about we get your content up on a channel? I'll mm. buy you better cameras, you go and film everybody, and let's put it on YouTube. And he's like, yeah, but how are we going to make money? I go, I don't know, but let's just document the stuff. you got to have it right. People have been documenting, you know, this kind of history for years, way before us and... You yeah, know. but, but you, you have to be real, right? Like, people are documenting people that they hear about. Mm. So you've got a lot of people that are in positions in, on TV channels and stuff that only hear the bigger names. Mm. They don't know nothing about what goes on in the underground unless we tell it to them. That's right. Yeah? And even when you tell it to them, it's a hard sell. They don't, they, you know, if you, if you tell them, yeah, um, like there's a potential interview with, I don't know, uh, Run DMC, or there's a potential interview with Derek B. Yeah? Most people are going to run straight to Run DMC. But Derek B deserves that break as well, mm. right? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. But it doesn't always necessarily mean that he will get that break. You know, but for years we'll, we'll keep hearing about Run DMC, but you'll only hear about Derek B once or twice here and there, you know, unless you're a big fan and you're following, you know, and that's, that's the point that I'm trying to make. It's like, you know, we, we as a channel, we're trying to highlight as much as we can, but, but the reality is this, right? When you're doing interviews with people, you've got to either do interviews with people who've already got a legacy, a story, or they're making the right kind of noises. So when people are calling me up and saying, yeah, you know, I've got an interesting story. What's your story? I got married, then I got divorced. I I don't see my children. 
that's not an interesting story. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll tell you what you do. You want to get on, on channels like this, go on to a, a couple of camels and you'll get on the interviews. You know, because you're doing something different and interesting. Now, I'm not encouraging people to do that. I'm just saying the, the way the media works, that's the kind of thing they're looking for. They're looking for the things that are going to bring the drama, the, the, the whatever. Whereas I'm actually looking to do the interviews with people that have interesting stories that don't necessarily bring in drama. You know, they've got stories. They've been in the music scene for a long time. They've, they've got interesting things happening. Some people have been attacked by serial killers and whatever. So, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, there's all these little things happening. I mean, I don't know what's going to like work, what's not going to work. All it is is finding the right people to do the interviews, who I feel are the right people. But my belief is these people deserve a lot of, um, a lot of views, a lot more views than they're getting. Mm. But because they haven't got the gangster stories, because they haven't got the drama stories, because they're not necessarily saying something just to, you know, get the attention, and they haven't got that three-second clip on Instagram that goes, oh, my God, did you hear what he said? You know, it's, um, it's not that kind of thing, you know. So it makes it more difficult. But, but it's cool, you know. Like, I, I believe that th there will come a time when what we do, that's me, you, Keller, um, Arms House, Nova, that things like this will eventually get the, the viewership they deserve, mm. basically because we're keeping it honest, we're keeping it real, and we're just documenting the things that need to be documented. But in terms of in terms of the channel and how, how um, everything's set out, mm. so originally when I started the channel, the idea was that we'd get performers in and we did documents, um, sorry, docu-chats, uh, but it wasn't docu-chats back then, it was the sofa chats, right? Um, and we do these, so they're all set out as playlists, but we also started with, you know, Kilo coming in to do interviews with graffiti guys as well. Yeah, big up Kilo. Yeah, yeah. big up Kilo. Um, you know, and, and obviously I have to mention my cameraman, Nick. Yeah, um, you know, massively. He's, big, big shout out to Nick. Yeah, he's, Nick, you're a legend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's he's stuck by me all along. Yeah, I've had a I've had a couple of like you know three or four sound guys, um, but eventually I ended up doing it all myself. But we've had Marlon Composure. We got to um, Marlon. We've had Levi. Yeah. Um, we've had um, James just came in for a couple of sessions, so uh, we could James for coming in for the sessions. Um, then on the mastering side of things for the audio, I had Elton helping out Earth Capital Music. So, yeah, uh, big up Elton as well for that. Um, Jazz T, obviously, um, he's, been in, T, yeah. Yeah, he's been in and done a few of the lives where he's on the turntables and stuff and people are performing. We've obviously got Sammy J doing the What's New, but we big might be changing Sammy the name. J. Um, yeah. And obviously started a new thing with Nova as well. Yeah, big up so, Nova. So there's, there's been a team, you know. It's wicked. Yeah, and the thing is, Blade, that's the thing. You know, it's not just about you. You're getting like loads of people involved in doing bits and pieces that's what i love about it it's like when you go onto your channel you know you've got all these different little sections with these different things going on it's, it's brilliant yeah thanks man and listen you should stand proud, proud uh, listen, i am i am proud stand proud of what you've achieved do, do you know what like i'm gonna say something really maybe to some people who just seem like some ridiculous thing to say some ludicrous stuff here but you know what i'm never gonna be happy until i see some of these people making it um, you know, that was always the intention, even back in the CD business, you know, I was, I was basically, you know, when every time I pulled up an artist, going even 30 years back, yeah, every time I pulled up an artist, my hope was that that artist was going to get a look in and they would get shows outside of their local area because someone heard about the damage they did, you mm -hmm. know, so it was always about like, you know, what can I do? To create an opportunity for somebody else because like i said when you create the opportunity for somebody else in some way it always comes back to you it might not come back to you from that person directly but you know it comes back to you mm. do you get what i'm saying yeah, yeah, like you will end up getting shows booked you will end up getting more cd orders you will end up getting you know more people wanting to come on the channel and and stuff like that but the mentality like i said for a lot of people is basically people are just thinking about what benefits them right I think that's destructive. What benefits mm. you isn't necessarily something that's going to keep you going. If you look at the bigger picture, if it benefits others while it's benefiting you, then it keeps moving. It keeps moving. But when it, when it's only one person concerned, right? I mean, let's look at it like a relay. Yeah, you got four people running a relay. What are you going to do when the second person isn't there to take the baton off you? Mm. I love that. Do you understand? Yeah, it's true. What are you going to do? 
How are you going to complete the relay? You're not going to complete. Or, or if you are going to complete the relay, you're going to do it all on your own and you're going to be worn out mm. while all the other runners are fresh. Mm. Yeah? So come on, guys, man, we could do this. If we all pull together as one and don't be together and unite as one force, yeah, we could achieve a lot. You, you know, literally wake up thinking what can benefit them. Some mm. people are bitter and twisted because somebody else is getting the shows and somebody else is getting the views and somebody else, whatever. But let's be real, like a lot of the views that come up for certain videos, that happens because someone's putting advertising money into it and they're investing in themselves. Now, whether those views are real or not, it doesn't matter. But you shouldn't be watching somebody else and getting bitter because someone's got more views than you. Should you should be happy for them. You should be happy for them uh, and you should figure mm. out how to do it so that you'll get more views. Mm. Like, Instead of analyzing everybody else and basically like trying to make out like, you know, there's blocking going on, which there is, don't get it twisted, there is blocking going on. And the reason why there's blocking going on is because there are people that don't want to see other people progress. And, you know, you got the click behavior as well. People will mm. like somebody mm. that's a friend of theirs that isn't necessarily that good and scheme said it, mm. you know what I mean? Like people will, will basically like somebody that is their friend, but they won't like somebody that's a hell of a lot better. What's all that about? But the thing is, I think it's, that is kind of like a small um, minority of people. Yeah, yeah, like but that. it I happens. Think, oh, yeah, it, do, it does happen, yeah. But I think the majority of people, they, they, they want this. They're hungry for this and they want to see you grow. Yeah, but, but you know what? There's, like, let's, let's not get it twisted. There's a lot of people that do want to see other people succeed. But there's also a lot of people that couldn't give a fuck. Mm. Yeah? They're, mm. they're only interested in what they're gaining. And, you know, you have to keep it real, bro, right? I've seen it. I hear people talking. People call me up and tell me these things all the time. When, when I'm asking someone, yo, bro, don't you think you'd get further if you pushed my man? And they're like, when was the last time he supported my post? Fuck him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That shit goes on, bro. I hear it all the time. And I keep saying to people, like, come on, man. Like, we got to grow together. We have to grow together. Well, and the thing is, it's like, like me with these kind of, like, cab chats or whatever. Me and you have always, um, you know, been in contact and uh, bounce ideas off each other. And, you know, when one of my videos does really well, you know, you're always on the phone, oh, brilliant, you know, you've done well, you've got this amount of views, it's a great interview. And the same with me to you, you're like, oh, wicked interview, B, you know, you've done well there, you know, and pushing it and sharing it. We've always united, it. we've always worked together, do you know what I mean? Whoa. And we've always tried to share other people's content as well. Yeah, I mean, whenever possible, obviously, like sometimes we just don't see it because, again, the algorithms are against us, right? So unless we go onto somebody's page and see what they're doing, which when you've got like 5, 10, 20,000 followers, it's difficult to remember whose page you haven't seen, mm. you know? Mm. But so let's, let's kind of um, look at this realistically. So you're doing your thing, everybody else is doing their thing. And if we, like you said, if we pull together, then we would go a little bit further, right? And then bit by bit, that little bit becomes a lot more. And then a lot more and a lot more until eventually we're all there, like living in our big comfortable houses, inviting each other to barbecues on a weekly basis during the summer and everyone's getting along and everyone's doing great, right? No one's trying to pull a gun out on nobody, right? That That's how I see the vision, right? Enough of the jealousy, enough of the bitterness, enough of who's doing better than me. Mm. It doesn't matter if someone's doing better than you. No. The reality is, as long as you're surviving, you're making ends meet and whatever, then it should all be good. And even if you're not, then look at how you're failing and why you're failing and improve on that rather Ooh. than being bitter about somebody else. Be together as one united, together as one. I mean, I mean look, um, there's a couple of people doing the podcast thing and, um, and I'm sure you'll remember this, where I called you up and I said, bro, at the moment I've got a little bit of money. If you want, I'll buy the cameras and everything for you. Mm. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, right. in the early days, yeah. Yeah, so, and I did that to somebody else. Which was nice. So, by the way, anyone watching this, I didn't accept Blade's offer. Yeah, he, but... didn't, he didn't accept the offer. He wanted to keep it raw. But I was trying to get <laughs> raw. No, raw. no, you did. You said yeah. to me, I just want to keep it raw yeah, and yeah. honest and whatever. But there yeah. was, you know, like getting, getting proper cameras and whatever was going to keep it honest anyway. It was just going to improve the quality. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously, like, I just wanted to help. Yeah, and yeah, I was in course. a position to back then, you know, so why not? Yeah, and I did that for somebody else as well. They know who they are. Yeah, I made the offer as well. But the, the important thing is this, right? Um, I've always been about like growing. Now, if I didn't want to see you grow, I wouldn't have offered to buy your, the camera equipment for you. Yeah. And, you know, up to now, it's never been mentioned. But I'm, I'm only mentioning it to make a point of it. 
yeah, we grow together. And I was, I was, and I am always more than happy to support other people doing what we're doing. But a couple of things I just want to clarify. The main reason I got All City Steve to come in and be the, the pilot episode of 521 was because he was the first person I saw in the UK hip hop scene that was documenting the UK hip hop stuff, graffiti, whatever, right? Well, and, listen, I, appreciate, Brad, I, I really appreciate you saying that. It does mean a lot, but I'm sure there's other people like, before me that was doing that as well, like and DJs and, uh, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, but they weren't radios. doing videos. Maybe it's not to the extent I was doing it. Okay, but you were the first person I kind of noticed doing that. Right. And no, it's, it's really nice of you to, to say that, but I don't know if I was kind of like the first... Well, for me, you were the first. I didn't, you know, I remember I was off the scene, I wasn't paying attention, I was in my own world trying to help everybody, and I was doing a good job at helping as many people as I could, so I was content with where I was. Yeah. Um, but then I started becoming discontented by everything because I just started seeing, like, you know what the pattern was? Loads of artists were always calling me and asking me for help. Like, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? And then I thought, you know what? It's like, maybe I need to switch what I'm doing. And I saw the CD business kind of declining anyway. And I knew because of the pandemic and everything, things were going to change and the CDs were all going to be dead and all that. So I figured now's the time to move on. But let's, so what I was trying to say um, was that the reason I got you in to be the pilot episode was because that was sending a message out to everyone that we're not in competition. Mm. Yeah, we're working together. Mm. It was so important for me that you were the first person that came in. And you know, I know that and I absolutely loved it. And I was absolutely honoured because I actually hate being in front of a camera. I'm a bit kind of camera shy. And you know, I learned a lot through that experience, being in front of a professional, you know, in a studio with lights on, proper cameras and sound, a sound guy, a cameraman, big up to Nick. You know, it was a real experience, Blade, and it's something I absolutely love doing. You know, and um, I've got to big you up for that massively for bringing me in to be your, your, you know, your first, your first kind of uh, sofa chat. Yeah, look, I had options to go wherever, and I just, I just figured, you know, what was the first and the most important message I can put out there, and for me, that was the most important message I could put out there. Yeah, like show everyone we're not competing. This mm. isn't a competition. You're not a threat to me. I'm not a threat to you. Mm -hmm. yeah? And we can grow together. Yeah. And, and that's what it's always been about. It's always about growing together. Like, it's, you know, since day one. And, and you know what's mad is, when, when we talk to a lot of people, I, you know, I've heard people calling me up and telling me that this person's like saying this about me or saying that about me. It's fine. Say what you're saying about me. The thing is, I know the truth. And the people around me know the truth. The people that we're talking about, whatever, or you're trying to say have got issues with me or I've got issues with them or whatever, that's all a bunch of bollocks, right? Because when we actually sit down and talk, I, I tell you what, if someone calls me up and says someone's got an issue with me, I'm picking up the phone and calling them to find out what's up and how we're going to resolve this. Mm. Yeah? Most times that's, I find that's what out... You should, that's what you should be doing. Yeah, but most times I find there is no issues. It's just mm. someone else is talking and there's a lot of people talking. And something's got twisted. So, no, not something's got twisted. Someone's twisted it on purpose mm. because they've got their own agendas. Mm. So what I find is basically if, if I've got something that I need to say to somebody, then I will personally call them up and talk to them. It doesn't need to be online or whatever. However, I've, I'm human. I've got emotions. Mm. If something's bothering me, I might put up a post about it. Yeah, but I'm not name calling uh, unless like I feel like that person needs to be name called, in which case I'll name call, you know. But most times it's like if I'm putting a post up about somebody or because of an experience and it's generally people I don't even know. People that are basically messaging me and going, oh, why are you supporting the youngsters? Why not? Mm -hmm. why, am I, why am I supporting the youngsters and you're not, you know? I've had people calling me up from my generation basically going, yeah, I, I don't like that these people are, you know, benefiting off of the work we did. Why not? Stop being bitter. Stop being twisted. Everyone deserves a shot. You had your opportunity. We all had our opportunity. If we didn't make it work, it's because we weren't educated enough or experienced enough in the world that we were in that basically, you know, we should be happy that we were able to pass that education and experience to the youngsters who've gone on to do something else. Pass that baton. Yeah, pass yeah. that baton. Yeah. I mean, my only thing is that, you know, my only personal grievance with everything is that basically there are some people that are just in it for the money. They got no love for the culture and they, they misuse and abuse the culture. Like hip hop is, is not just about 
you know, the, the rap side of things, and in particular where people are just, just talking a load of negative nonsense and whatever, that's not what hip hop is about. It was never about that. It was about you unity, know? isn't it? Well, yeah, peace, love, unity, and yeah. having fun, right? Yeah, exactly. But obviously now we wonder what that kind of fun was talking about, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I'm just saying, like, peace, love, unity, and having fun, you know? So that's that's the message we try and bring across. Like, when we do the interviews, I try and bring a bit of humor in. I try and be serious. I try, you know, because, like, we all do different, and, and this is an important thing as well, with all of us doing our interviews, yeah? We all do something different. We all add something different to the equation. Got our different little flavors, our different all, all little styles. Us. All of us. I mean, mm -hmm. Arms House is completely different to us. Oh, man, Killer's, so Killer's different. You know yeah, what I mean? Uh, you're different. Nova's different. I'm different. Mm. Yeah. But um, I mean, the other the other thing um, is where where you you know people keep calling my thing a podcast, and I don't even see your thing as a podcast. You do interviews. Mm. I do interviews. We're not a podcast. I find like podcasts are, are different because people just go in there and have general chats and whatever and wherever it goes, it goes. It, it can come across like an interview or it can just come across like a whole load of waffle depending on who you're listening to or watching, you know. But I prefer for my thing to be called an interview. Mm. Sometimes I say podcast because everyone's kind of familiar with it and I can't be asked to get into a conversation about it. But while I'm here on camera, it's like, I want to differentiate between the two. I consider what I do as interviews, mm. you know, and I consider what you do as interviews. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, interviews and podcasts, two different things. And um, I was going to say, to get kind of artists involved, I mean, you know, you're, um, you're, you're, you're out, you know, obviously over in, in Kentways. So actually, we're sat outside your place now, isn't it, Brie? Yeah. But... Um, do you find it a bit tricky to get artists coming down? I mean, when's, where's the furthest person, you know, an artist has actually come from to be, you know, to be interviewed or do like a, like a one take or, uh, you, you, you know, where's the furthest someone's coming from? Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah, I've had... LA? Had, yeah, yeah. Wow. I had someone come from... I mean, uh, just last week we had Rusty Jukes who was in the country and basically saw what we were doing or through his, his mate, uh, Detonate, who's done an album with, um, you know, and they contacted me and said, yo, Rusty's here, do you want to do this? I'm like, why not? So, mm -hmm. yeah, we did this. And um, so, obviously, by the time this goes out, my interview's already going to be out there with the one take following it. So, yeah, uh, look out for the Rusty Jukes interview as well. Yeah, no, that'd be and, uh, and the one take. And, um, yeah, do you get do you get people to, to come in quite quite, quite easily because of where you yeah. are? Yeah. Well, well, you know what, like, humans will be humans. Mm. And everyone's gonna have a different uh, view on distance and whatever and but I have my view on this I look at it like if you think distance is an issue Then you really shouldn't be in this life in, in this career. Yeah, but no, I mean obviously be in this life Did yeah. you travel about when you, in your yeah, own, yeah, hundred percent. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent I'll tell you uh, what I was dedicated to doing yeah, like the, the example the best example I can give you is this completely broke Waiting for my doll money. Money's not coming yet. I get a sudden offer to go to Newcastle University to do a two-hour interview. Mm. I borrowed two hundred and ten pounds for the hotel and for the travel, and I jumped on that train ASAP and I went all the way to Newcastle. Now I was in two hundred and ten pound debt for that money. I didn't have. So first of all, no one can turn around and say I'm broke because if, if you if you want this, you'll find a way. Yeah. Then I went to Newcastle University to do this interview, and we got there early. I had sat around for a long time and I got called in for 10 minutes of that show. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Wow. And I was told two hours. I was pissed off at the time. Mm. But I stayed there, put on a smile, and I got on with what I was getting on with. Then I went back to the hotel, still kind of pissed off. 10 minutes. Is that all? 10 minutes. You know, no one finds out anything in 10 minutes. Do you know what I'm saying? And then, basically, when I got back home, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to pay this debt that I owe. And then... Two weeks later, I get a phone call from the union head, basically saying, yo, people watch that interview and they're interested in basically putting on a performance with you performing. And would you, would you be up for it? And I said, yeah, I'll think about it. And he goes, how much do you charge? Now, at that time, and I'm sorry for, I'm going to tell the story as it happened. Yeah, but um, at that time, I got offered, uh, I used to get offered 500 pounds to do a show. But... 
I'm not going to tell you how much I got paid, but all I can say is it was a hell of a lot more than that. And, you know, it, it all came about from that interview. Mm. Yeah, that's 10 minutes. But what it, it put me in a position was I, I got the team together. We went down to Newcastle, did our first ever show in Newcastle. And the person that I wasn't sure how I was going to pay the debt back now, yeah, because I wasn't getting 210 pounds, you know, from my doll. You know what I'm saying? I was getting 52 pounds every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, with that, I had to eat, survive, whatever, but I wasn't even eating and surviving. I was putting the money aside to do other things. You know, I was living on two pounds 15 a week. I was literally buying a, a, a loaf of bread and a portion of chips. That's it. That was my, you know, for the whole week. One loaf of bread, portion of chips, until I started realizing you can actually steal food and they can't arrest you. You know what I mean? So I, was, I started stealing food. So, but I was putting all my door money aside. Anyway, I managed to pay that debt off. That's the point from that experience. So if you don't go and do these things, how are you meant to know what was possible? Mm. How are you meant to know? So all I'm saying is, okay, yesterday I had three guys come in from Leeds, five hour journey, no complaints, came in, did their thing. And you know, OB Joe and you know, chills. Um, you know what I'm saying? Thanks for, for coming down and everything. Mm. Um, but they came in and did their thing, no complaints. Um, I put out a message saying I'm looking for young artists between the age of 18 to 25, and I've had about 40 people message already, and a couple of them are coming down from Scotland. Wow. Yeah, they're coming down from Scotland. So, you know, think about it. If these people are willing to make the journey, and you're half an hour away but can't be asked to make the journey, who's the problem? Like you're only a problem to yourself. Like people, you know, like the, the point I'm making is, is that people will go, oh, you don't understand. I'm broke. I've got kids. I've got this. What do you think I was? Where do you think other people are? Some people are obviously younger, so they've, they've got the potential to just pick up and go and whatever. But I'm not saying that you have to do what I did with my life, but you can't complain if you don't take these opportunities. Mm. And just because we're not the BBC, you know, all, all I'm saying is, I'm pretty sure if I was 20 minutes away from you and the BBC was four hours away from you, you'd rush to go to the BBC, mm. but you ain't coming to the smaller channels. Yeah. That's not our problem. That's your problem. That's the way you look at things. So mm. when you see other people getting shows and events and collaborations and whatever and so on and so forth, like ask who's the problem. Yeah? It's like when, when Stop throwing blame. It's like when I asked you to come in to uh, my uh, channel blade, uh, obviously many years back and um, you know, you, you jumped at the chance, like, yeah, come on, let's go and do it. You know, I might have only had, like, about, at the time, about 500 or 1,000 subscribers. But, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go and do this thing. Do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, listen, bro, and I was busy. I was yeah. running my CD business and everything, but I thought, you know what, fuck it, man, let's go, let's, let's, go, do, let's do this. You know, and I didn't need the promotion because I wasn't really trying to promote anything. Mm. But at the same time, it's like I saw what you were doing and I wanted to contribute to what you were doing. And because, cause... because I knew you anyway and I was also a fan. But even if you didn't know me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you didn't know me. The thing is, like, if you can get the opportunity to create that time, then support. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. You... I wasn't trying to sell anything. No, no, no. Yeah, I just I just saw what you were doing. You know, I get loads of people asking me, can I do an interview and stuff? And I always say to people, like, keep chasing me, remind me, because I'm busy, I'll mm. forget. Mm. Yeah. And on top of that, it's like by the time I've gone through some of the messages, your message is like the 300th one. Mm. So I'm kind of lost as to, I'm not going to spend my whole day going through a whole bunch of messages. So every now and then, just knock it to the top by going, yo, B, what do you reckon? You know, I get people sending me, um requests um like to to sell merchandise and stuff and even even though it's potentially bringing me money and stuff i'm st i'm still not messaging them back because i'm busy because i'm doing other things but what i'm saying is you know when when you called me and said yo do you want to do the interview and um you know it didn't take long for us to organize it we we spoke about it and next thing I was, I was like, next yeah, thing we I'm was dead. in New Cross, walking around and Blackheath and Blue Coats, uh, and New Cross train station and Blackheath Common, weren't we? We was all, yeah, all yeah. over the place. Yeah, yeah. The only place we didn't go to was Woolwich. Yeah, and that was that was a major part of my story, which yeah, got missed no, out. Know. You know, but yeah, look, like the thing is, it's like I saw what you were doing, yeah, and I just thought, you know what? It's like I'm not. Look, the bottom line is, I'm not trying to get any kind of acknowledgement for, you know. I'm not trying to sell an album. I'm not trying to get shows. I didn't care about all of that. 
I just wanted to contribute to what you were doing because I saw what you were doing as positive. Mm. So if people are going to call me up and say, yo, uh, I'm doing an interview, or, I've jumped on loads of people's lives and whatever oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm always trying to support. You know, that's, that's the key, right? That's the key. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And tell me about, um, you know, some of the, the artists that have passed through. I mean, you've had some incredible artists, uh, you know, passing through your, um, you know, the channel. I mean, tell me about some of the key artists. Or not even key artists, just tell me about some of the artists. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously there's a hell of a lot to remember, so apologies yeah. for anyone that I miss out. Yeah. It's not intentional. There's so many. Yeah, there's so many. But the first person I'm going to me mention is AJ from Hard Noise. Yeah, big up and, AJ. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm going to mention AJ, because there was a point where in the middle of the pandemic, everyone was kind of like, oh, I can't make the journey because this and that and whatever. And, and I, I said to AJ, bro, I'm struggling to get people in because, like, the pandemic has kind of fucked everything up. You know what I mean? Mm. And, you know, and then I, I say, like, you know, I've organized things with people and people are canceling last minute. And it's, you know, you lot have to understand this is hard. Mm. Like, people always do pull out last minute. Mm. And then what ends up happening is, like, you end up forgetting that, you know, this was ever going to happen. So you don't end up chasing them. And, you know, and then when you do remember to chase them, it's kind of like, you know, is this going to happen or not? And and it just goes round in circles quite a lot of times with a lot of people. And there are some people that, you know what, I'm not even going to waste my energy like chasing because I've chased enough. Yeah, and there's only so much chasing I can do. I, 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 get, I get played, I get exactly the same, you know, I chase and chase and chase yeah. and then in the end you kind of... Yeah, but you know what, I, I live by one rule. Uh, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And if you're showing me that you're unreliable, then I believe you. Do you know what I mean? So when, when we've organized like three or four times and you've canceled three or four times, then you know what? You're lucky I even asked you a third time. I'll ask you twice. Third time I'm not asking. You know what I mean? Because there's a hell of a lot of other, other people out there that would want to come in and do what they're doing. They might not have bigger names than you. But I don't care bigger names and everything. It's about respecting each other and if you're really about growing the scene and everything other than being about you rather than being about yourself then you will jump in at every given opportunity to be part of what is going to add you know the glue to mm. build this thing mm. yeah but yeah so the first person i really want to big up is because i was telling this person all these things yeah and he goes you know what it be do you need me there i'm there and, I, and that was aj yeah big AJ, up AJ, from well, aj you're a diamond yeah 100 percent. like diamond. diamond gold bronze everything that's aj right AJ um, the man. but I, I will say like when, when, when I said to him, all right, when do you want to come down? He goes, when do you need me? I go, two days. Like, let's organize it, two days. Came down straight away. No faffing about, you know, and we had a laugh. We had a blast, you know. And you know what was really good about it is he was talking about how much he enjoyed the journey. Mm. Yeah? AJ will verify this. AJ, put something in the comments to verify this, yeah. Mm. He was talking about how much he enjoyed the journey. And the journey wasn't like, you know, it's, it's like because I was telling him some people are complaining about the journey. But how, how can you know when you haven't even made the journey? But I tell you, I actually know people that have traveled to the other side of the country to go and shag some girl. But they won't come in to do interviews because they don't see the value in that. But they see the value in shagging some girl across the other side of the country. Again, you're the problem, not me. Yeah, And not any of the other people that are doing the podcasts and whatever. If you're unreliable, that's down to you, innit? Like, I'm looking for people that are serious. So if you're serious, you want to get on the channel, hit me up. As long as you've got interesting stories. If you if you haven't even got an interesting story, but you're an artist and you want to come in and perform rap, singing, poetry, even if you want to just come in and play an acoustic guitar, come in and do them things. You know what I mean? The doors are open. Like, you know, let, let's grow. Um, so... As, going, long as, you've got that, to, as long as you've got that kind of hunger, everyone's welcome. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter how big or how small you are. Hunger and reliability, because you need mm. to understand that that reliability, when you throw a spanner in the works, it fucks up everything else. Mm. Like, we end up missing deadlines that we've got, you know? And this is the reason why it gets frustrating, because we could end up with three weeks of nothing happening because two people cancelled and that's the three weeks gone. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And, you know, during the pandemic, we had like 17 people that basically were supposed to come in in one month to do whatever. Guess what? 16 cancelled. Wow. 16. It was frustrating. Yeah. And then, you know what? You end up having to ask yourself, am I the problem? You know what I mean? And then what ends up happening? It's like, it's like when I started making music. When I made Lyrical Maniac, 
I didn't have the world dramas around me. I just made Lyrical Maniac and I made Mind of an Ordinary Citizen at the same kind of time. Yeah, and, and it was just all love. It was like, yo, I just want to do this. But then after you start experiencing some of the negativity in the industry firsthand directly from, you know, being in record company meetings and everything, suddenly you become a different person. And now people are seeing the person that has got issues with the world. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I didn't, those issues come from somewhere. They don't come from me. I came in there just being an artist. And it's the same with this. I came in here just trying to do something that was going to help a lot of people. But I've had to deal with a lot of artists who just basically are unreliable, unpredictable, on everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But, you know, I, so I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to thank everybody that has turned up. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to thank everybody that is going to turn up. Yeah. Because I know there's a lot of people queuing up waiting to come here. You know, and I really appreciate all those people that are actually taking themselves serious enough. See, part of the problem as well is some of the people that I'm trying to interview, they're going, but well, I'm not doing nothing now. Okay, I'll tell you what then, yo, bro. Listen to this. How about this making sense for you? If you're not doing nothing, stop going online and telling the whole world why you're bitter about nothing happening. When you're getting, and no one's telling your story, but then you're getting the opportunity to come and tell your story either with me or with other podcasters or interview platforms or whatever. They're, they're offering you those opportunities, but you ain't taking them. You don't have a right to moan about those things. You really don't. You get the opportunities and you don't take them up. Then you start asking yourself whether you're the problem. Again, I'm, I have to address it because that goes on. If you're not going to take the opportunities you get given, you don't have a right to moan. Yeah? Stop going around telling everybody that no one wants to know. Because we've reached out to you. And we have said to you, we want to know. Come and tell your story. But what, what is it? Are you worried about some of the questions you're going to get asked? You know what I mean? Are you, do you expect everything? You know, social media has taught everybody to just be this perfect thing. Do you understand? Like everybody's perfect. This is why you have all these filters and all these girls and whatever putting filters on and whatever trying to make themselves look perfect. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. Do you know what I mean? Do you want me to pick my nose right now and show you how imperfect <laughs> no, I am? No, don't do that. Blake, no, but I'm saying, that. do you understand? But no, people totally. never put those things online. Mm. And, you know, so all I'm saying is I know some people, like, you have to ask, why do you not want to go into any of these platforms? Not mine. I'm not moaning about mine. I'm just saying I see people that moan about no one wants to talk to them. But then I hear from other people that they've asked. But then they ain't turning up. Why? Why? Do you know what I mean? So, again, I'm going to say thanks to everybody that does make the journey, that doesn't complain about the journey, that uses the journey as a means to go and experience life outside of their own neighborhood, go and find things. Like, i got two guys coming down from Scotland. Youngsters, hungry. They don't care. I, I said, what day do you want to be there? They said, any day. And I'm like, well, how about this day? And they're going, yeah, no problem. And they're already making plans and everything to come down. But you know what they're doing? They're hanging around for a couple of days and they're going to go to clubs. They're mm. going to go walking around, seeing where events are happening and all kinds of stuff. And, and they're going to tie it in with other things that they can do. Do you know what I mean? Um, but let's, let's keep it real as well. Like London was always a problem for that. London always felt like, you know, like everyone has to run around them. And this is the reason why, like, a lot of people that deserve the breaks in places like Birmingham, Nottingham, Manchester, you know, Derby, all them places, like, in loads of other places, Cardiff, like, they didn't get the opportunities, basically, because, you know, Luton, come on, man, you had Firelife Cypher there, but they weren't exactly getting a look in in London for a long time. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we saw all of those things happening. Do you know what I mean? So, it's basically, London always feels like they've got the... You know the hierarchy on things and, and you haven't there's artists out there that are that are much better than a lot of the london artists as well that's not to say there aren't artists in london that are dope there are there's sick artists out there do you know what i mean but everybody deserves a break mm. everybody and everybody deserves to shine everybody deserves to shine but yeah let's go let's go back to answering your question about the names i mean so mm. i said aj as a priority because AJ made that bold move to turn around and go, you know what, fuck everybody, B, I'm there. When do you need me? So AJ, thank you very much for that. I had that really, you know, when I was starting to lose faith in humans, AJ reinstilled that in me. You get what I'm saying? And then a lot of things happened after that as well. So, you know, who, who have we had on the channel that, you know, like I said, there's been so many. So I'm well, just going to name a few. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name a few. Mm. So, 
you know, Chester P. Yeah. Incredible. Like that Big performance as well as the interview. What a, what a dude, man. What a it's like, yeah, and someone I feel like, you know, the world needs to know about, the whole mm. world needs to know about, because he's up there with the best of the best. To the men. Yeah, so. What a legend. 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's not to take anything away from his brother as well. His brother's incredible as well, Farmer G. Mm. I mean, I'd oh, love to yeah. get Farmer G in here at some point. So, yeah, oh, let's, let's see if that happens. Uh, incredible. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, we've had John ZD. We've had a couple of people from America. So, we had Master Rays. We've had um, Keith Murray, Atmosphere. Um, just done the one with Rusty Jokes as well. There's a few other people. Um, DJ Random. Yeah, we've just done the one with DJ Random. We've obviously had DJ Jazz T. We've had Scheme Sterling. Um, Sarah Love, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Love, Love. Shorty Blitz, uh, Rob from the Stereo MCs, Jordan um, Grant, Jordan Grant, Big up Jordan. See, Jordan, Jordan gave me, he, I used to love chatting to Jordan, he gave me, because he's wicked on the cameras and all that, you know, and he gave me some uh, advice in my early days as well, so big shout out to Jordan. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go, and you know, Jordan was kind of, um, it was a different one because like, I felt like, you know, as much as like some certain people know him, he's not that well known. And I, I said to him, look, we should do a full two and a half hour interview, right? Because I think he's got an interesting story. And that's an example of someone who's got an interesting story, mm. you know, and it, it carried on. We could have talked for longer as well, but he had so many interesting stories from there. So I was, I was happy to just leave the camera rolling and like, you know, even take the time to edit longer and all that, just basically because I think his stories are incredible. He's someone that's actually contributing all the time to the scene and everything. And he's just a generally helpful guy. Do you get what I'm saying? So it was it was really nice, basically, to be able to get somebody in that isn't necessarily in the forefront like everybody else and whatever. But that's got a great story. That's got an incredible yeah. story. His yeah. story is amazing. So if you haven't seen the Jordan Grant interview, go and watch go that. Go check it. Pick up yeah. Jordan. But, but then you also had people like Scheme. You know, so Scheme dropped a whole heap of gems in there. You had uh, Gordon Simba. Um, Mr. Dexter. Mr. Dexter. How Come can we on, forget man. Mr. Mr. Dexter. Dexter? Listen, when 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 someone ends up doing the interview and then at, by the end of the interview he's twerking and everything, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> so. you know it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. He's he's just a funny guy, isn't it? Colin Dexter. McDonald two Colin way. McDonald. Big up Colin. Yeah, yeah. Colin McDonald two way. There, there's like I said, there's loads. There's Shorty Blitz. Um, Cold forty five. Cold forty five. Yeah. But but other but other people, youngsters as well. Like you know, the, some of the younger people as well came through. Like you had Ill Sykes as well. Mm. So you know, Ill Sykes is a dope artist. Wicked. So it was good to get like people like him in. And let's let's uh, just clarify. Ill Sykes was the was the pilot for the one take. You know, mm. we decided like literally a couple of days before that we're gonna switch it up and do one takes instead of five twenty one live. Um, yeah, so we set it up to do the one takes and um, Ill Sykes was the first one to actually kick that off. Big up Ill Sykes, although Canadian dad. Yeah, and Canadian dad came over from Canada, he was in the wow. UK and we got him in and he didn't hesitate, he was just like, I'd love to and he was here. And uh, I wish we could have done even a longer interview but he had to rush off and everything as well so you yeah, know, big up to Canadian Dad. Yeah, Anyone 100%. watching this, check out Canadian Dad's um, That's another one YouTube that you need channel. To check out, check although, his channel out. You know yeah, what exactly. I mean? Wicked. Exactly. Because although he's from Canada, he's mm. supporting the UK scene. He's not supporting the Canadian scene, he's supporting the UK scene. Mm. You know big what I mean? Canadian so make sure Dad. you go and check out uh, Canadian Dad Reacts, CDR. You had that uh, Golden Simba. Yep. Big Golden up Golden Simba. Um, but but there's there's loads. I can't Kilo. remember everything. Kilo, oh, uh, Rob, Score. Score, yeah, yeah. Big up to Score. I you mean, look, we, you know, if you've had so many Blade, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it's such an achievement, you know. Yeah. And um, as I said from the start, you should stand proud of what you've achieved and what you're going to achieve as well. So where can you kind of see the channel going from here? I, I mean, listen, like, I'm the kind of person that doesn't give up unless life kind of tells me it's time to give up. Mm. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I don't even heed the warnings from life, right? Um, you know, I just carry on because it's all I know. You know, it, this is this is a vision that I had from many years ago and I was too busy to do it because of the CD business. Mm. Yeah, I was hectically busy. So as soon as the opportunity came, I started it. My intention is this, right? It's like, if I can create one superstar, I've done what I set out to do. But if I can create 10 superstars, then we can really build a scene. Mm. Yeah, because it shows what the channel is capable of doing. And 
you know, that will also make it more interesting for people to want to travel across even the world to be involved in the channel. You know, whether whether it's just a one take or an interview or something, but you know, the whole thing is, you know, where do I see it going? I just see it growing all the time. Well, it is growing uh, all the time. Yeah, I just see it growing all the time. Mm. But then there is going to reach a point where it's going to spike and then suddenly it's going to take off. You know, and um, I feel like that moment isn't even that far away. You know, when I when I started the channel, I gave myself between um, five to seven years for it to be where it is. I'm three years in. Mm. You know what I mean? And you've achieved so much. I've, I've achieved a lot, but I also feel like, you know, when, when you wake up one morning and you've seen a million views added to your channel, that's when you know like okay things are actually things are actually starting to happen now because mm. it has been a slow growth you know but it's always going to be a slow growth when you're supporting what people out there consider as a bunch of nobodies they're not a bunch of nobodies they're mm. just a bunch of somebody's waiting to be somebody's do you know what i mean i love that and, and, yeah and you know none of these people are a bunch of nobodies the only people that end up becoming a bunch of nobodies are the people that weren't in it for the right reasons and they basically thought that they could go somewhere and do something and blow up it didn't happen so they they gave up and they left the scene behind and you know some people tried this for 20 years then give up some people try it for two minutes and give up you know what i mean this is you know what they say about you know a dog isn't for christmas is for life mm. hip-hop and music and the arts and everything it's not for Christmas, it's for life. Mm. Like even, even me as a retired artist, I never stopped being the artist. So I fully understand what being an artist is. So when I'm, when I'm interviewing people and asking questions and whatever, I'm asking from an artist's perspective as well as from a fan perspective. So yeah, this is for life. That's amazing, B, what, what you're capturing. And as I say, stand proud of what, what you've achieved and what you're achieving. And I'll tell you what, we've got a little look in the back of the cab. We've got some merchandise going on. Do you want yeah. to hold up a few bits of gums? I mean, you, you know, do you, do, you, do you sell a few bits and bobs now and again? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll show you. Um, so obviously... Because my, we... my cab at the moment is like the 0521 <laughs> station. It's kind of, we've got an 0521 takedown in the yeah, cab. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, before, oh, yeah. before I go anywhere, like... Big up to the know, arms. Yeah, I have, to, I have to just say, big up to the arms house, to the mom's house, to your mom's house. Exactly. Arms house. And what, anyone what watching this, subscribe to them channels. One, one sec. Arms house to your, your mom's, mom's house. house. Arms house to, to your mom's, mom's house. house. <laughs> to your mom's house. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, so before before I actually start, let me just let me just pull up these. Um, so, this isn't for sale. It's the only one I've got. It's the only one that's been made. So this is um, the Look blade jacket. Wow. So it's got all my record covers, as many of them as I could fit on. Anything that I was involved with, as many of them as I could fit on. So you know, obviously on the front, you got your lyrical maniac. And um, you got the lion, you got lyrical maniac, you got mind of an ordinary citizen, mm. guerrilla tactics, pop idol, um, four walls, cleared away, um, rough it up. Uh, you got the stuff that I did with grasshopper, warp zone, um, rhyme bomb, uh, survival of the hardest working, blow you out the frame, mumps. There's, there's a lot. That is some history, ones. some historical jacket. Yeah, you know, you know, I made this as a joke actually, because what it was, every time I went out, people used to say to me, "What records have you done?" So I thought, you know what, next time someone asks me, I'm just going to say, "Read this." <laughs> so I actually wore it to a local really? pub uh, for a meeting with some friends, and someone goes to me, "So what records have you done?" And I was like, "Just read this," and I just turned around and yeah. Brilliant. So so we got we got that. Um, so yeah, we got that one. Um, Got so we got we got like blade t-shirts and whatever but this smile at the world yes yeah, smile world at the smile world back at you yes yeah, smile at the world and the world will smile back at you that was mm. that was a thing um that i got from um the stereo mcs i believe it was nick hallam uh basically from the stereo mcs that said that and you know it stuck with me for the rest of my life because mm. At the time, I was in a depressing place and, you know, he just said that comment and I thought, you know what, there's so much truth in that. So, I learned basically to smile at pretty much everything. So, even if you're going through the baddest times in your life, I still try and find a smile from somewhere and I advise mm -hmm. most of you do that because being able to smile just changes your personality, changes who you are mm -hmm. and, and it puts you in a positive place where other people recognize that and gravitate more to you, you know. So, I mean, we all go through hardships but we still have to try and find a way to pop a smile out every now and then. 
to strive for. You know, um, so with the 521 stuff, I mean, this is a one-off tracksuit. Um, so it's got the bottoms as well. Uh, I wore that on the Jazz T interview recently. So you've got the cap, you've got the tracksuit top. Um, that's actually a medium size and I made it for my son, not for me. Um, so when we were, when I was now, now you lost a bit of timber, you can squeeze into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh? You can <laughs> exactly. get like, one of your legs in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got the 521 caps. Um, 521 caps, different colours. you got the, the white one as well over there. Um, where, where can people uh, purchase uh, products? I mean, if anybody's you interested. You up on Insta. Um, yeah, if anybody's interested, just hit me up on the Instagram or... What's your, what's your Instagram details? Babe? Okay, the Instagram, the direct one is Blade, B-L-A-D-E, 691 underscore UK. Or you can email on info at 0521.co.uk. That's zero, sorry, info at 0521, the numbers, yeah, like that, 0521.co.uk. Um, so we've got like different you know that one's a t-shirt that one's a sweatshirt and you know what i love colors. the microphone as the one it's wicked isn't it yeah i think i think the logo stands out personally so but that's just me being biased in it so um yeah there's there's loads more so obviously we got that there's a there's a red cap that's over there with it as well so we're gonna put that there wicked. so there's the red cap there's the yellow um I, unfortunately i couldn't find any yellow caps so i got the black one with the yellow writing on that mm. you know um so there's all of that and then there's that one i love which that kind of goes mm. with that wicked so wicked. so yeah there's there's loads there's loads so um, anyway so yeah. anyone watching this go and subscribe to blade's channel and also if you can um buy a cab or a hoodie or whatever because it's wicked merch and yeah. it ain't kind of cheap uh, either is it? it's good quality yeah yeah um you know like i try and make sure that the quality is always to a certain standard so you know um i, I always take pride in the quality of everything that i do i try and always deliver uh, to a certain quality and everything but you know what i, I just want to take this opportunity just to say like just remember this ain't about just one platform right mm. one platform doesn't grow the scene like you need to support all the platforms that are out there 100%. Like, and you know it doesn't matter if you disagree with some of the things that like say for example um we all know that nova's got his thing going on and you might disagree with his views and whatever but you know what it's healthy to have those disagreements just basically because it, it shows the other perspectives of everything i rate what nova's doing mm. you know and, and uh he's on his game and he, he's basically pursuing things and whatever but i also like the fact that we don't always agree with everything but that's the reason why i kind of got him in to do this this bigger than us thing that we're doing just basically because it is more interesting when we don't always agree and we can have disputes and whatever but at the end of it we get up shake hands hug and we're like yo when we hook it up next time it's, it's never any you know i think people have forgotten the art of being able to disagree and not beef mm. you know and i think it's so important that you can have a disagreement with somebody without falling out without being you know their biggest enemy for the next 10 years and whatever you know learn, learn to disagree we come from a time where disagreements were fine no it's true man and is there, B, is there anyone you want to kind of give a, a big shout out to i mean there must be so many of these sammy J and like the whole team i suppose isn't it yeah obviously i want to big up everyone that's been involved in the channel i already named everybody so i'm not going to go through like the list of names again and whatever but yeah just want to big up everybody that has been on the team that is on the team that's still, still supporting to all of all the people that are supporting the channel you know the people that are actually helping us spread the word and getting it out there and letting people know we exist just be listen it's absolutely incredible you know what you're doing for the scene trying to build the scene back up again and to, trying to promote all, all all artists out there whether they're known or not known you should stand proud and look at that the man himself in the back the 0521 in the house <laughs> um yeah so yeah thanks again for having me i hope um, you enjoyed blade i hope you enjoyed this little chat oh no i thought it was terrible bro 
<laughs> well, but... listen, listen you got to start somewhere, haven't it? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm just joking. No, thanks a lot for having me, bro. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, just, you know, just keep doing what you're doing as well because it's so important to all of us because we all bring something different to this. Mm. And, um, yeah, I just think it's important that we all carry on doing what we're doing. Um, and, you know, for anyone who's out there watching, make sure you go and check out all the other um channels you know Definitely. killer keller's channel nova's channel yep. arms house to your mom's house uh, all city taxi talk show big up uh, all them channels one, all of them and all the other channels and, yeah. and there's others that there's exist as well others. like taze bar for bar uh, there's um, king fred yeah and there's um uh, shotgun the orcs shotgun the orcs as well yeah that's the one i was thinking of uh so yeah shotgun the orcs there's big loads of them, them. But yeah, just just um, big up for having me in again. And, you know, I know I can talk a lot, but I hope what I'm saying makes sense. And yeah, uh, thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel. There's so many of you I could name, but, you know, uh, instead of like trying to not miss out people, I'd rather just say thanks to everybody. One big shout. And um, yeah, just, just keep doing what you're doing. Never give up. Carry on being artists because somewhere down the line, all of this that's building up is all going to connect in a way and everyone's going to get their opportunities they deserve. For all those people that are willing to make the journeys and all that, thank you. You will get your opportunities, not just necessarily through what we do, but through others that notice what we do, that you're passing through on. Um, yeah, that, that's it, you know. But but if you want something to happen, you got to make it happen. Mm. So you ain't going to make it happen by sitting indoors pushing your buttons. Mm. Get out there. Get down the 0521 studio and make this thing happen. Yeah, I mean, all, all, the, all the studios everywhere, you know what I mean? God gave you legs, use them. <laughs> Man-made trains, use them. Man-made cars, use them. Man-made cabs, black cabs, yeah. use them. Yeah. You lose them or you're going to lo lose them. <laughs> but Blade, listen, an absolute honour, my man. Every time, and uh, we talk on a regular basis, so I'll be talking to you later on. But listen, big up to yourself, man, and stand proud. They're yeah, wicked. Thanks a lot. You too, bro, and right. everybody else out there. Wicked. All right. All right, B. All right, peace. Later.